my name is Benjamin um, and I'm here because I started like a journey uh, it's about eight years ago now I was a journey without money and we started from Holland from Den Haag because I met my two uh, great friends there like Raphael and Nicola who were from Germany and uh, Italy so we decided to live without money and just hitchhike and both hike towards uh, Mexico was the, the goal the main outcomes of this journey was that we really learn uh, how to receive uh, from the other people, like to just uh, shut off the ego and this thing that we all have to be self-sufficient, independent. We just learn to open ourselves and to receive what the world has to, had to give us. And it was a very important discovery for me because I realized that everything was working and that there is different way of giving uh, things and receiving and that you can just make it in a very natural way. So the idea of gift economy was born in my head at that moment. So it existed already, but I opened myself to the idea of a gift economy. So an economy that's working kind of naturally, without schedule, without like rules, but just like I give what I want to give and somehow the universe or whatever we want to call it will give it back to me. Mm. And uh, so it did work for the journey for three years and a half. And I also became vegan in the journey. That was also part of me, like uh, uh, you, have to, you have to give freely, but also not to take things that uh, are not given. Uh, free by someone so this means life of animals but also their products and all this all this was really great in a journey like traveling going from places to places at one point we were just thinking okay this is great but maybe we could just create a, a place and to make it more uh, permanent so that's where the idea of Aotopia was born we've been trying th during three years to find a place because we didn't want to buy it we wanted to have something like given like mm. to start from a a good food but, um, but it didn't work out we tried in two places and every time it was not working because the place belonged to someone else mm. so at one point there was some frustration or tension it was hard for the other person to really let go and also for us to really feel uh, connected to the place knowing that at one point another the other person could just say okay well you know I don't really like this idea so finally we decided to use money um, it matched a little bit with the, the birth of my child which also at that moment, I stopped not using money because I realized that it was maybe more important that uh, Jasmine and my daughter were happy and had all their needs fulfilled. Uh, even if the life without money was uh, pretty okay, uh, still some, some tensions and some fears that are pretty complicated to face when you have a child in a normal society. So, uh, so I was using money again and then I opened myself to the idea to buy a place. So we found some people who were interested in buying the place with us. And uh, so they lent us some money. We found this place and we didn't know this region. But when we came here, we really had like a you know, good food, we say in French, like we really loved it at first. Yeah, we feel free, like we really feel connected to the nature here. It's uh, very close to the Loire, which is a wild river. And it's been now two years. So we came here in 2016. At first we were like five, three people left because they realized like living in a community was not really for them or they were a bit tired of having always to discuss about everything all the time. And, uh, but then some other people joined and um, so now we are like a six residents and we want to get to like 10 people and like some children on the side. And so the main idea of Eotopia is still this gift economy. So it's connected to the idea of the animals and veganism. So like uh, just living any beings, being free to give what he or she wants, uh, the way he or she wants. And we try to apply this to the human beings as well. So here we have visitors coming uh, uh, two weeks per month and they always come and they say the, the, the place becomes their house for those two weeks like us. And if they want to work, they do. If they want to clean, they do. If they want to bring something or to help cooking or to bring food or not, like they're free to do this. Uh, we never obliged anyone. And, uh, and it worked, like it's been two years and it's working all the time, like people are just like willing to give. We're really discovering that uh, if you just trust the people and like leave them uh, free of uh, participating to a project they choose to, to come or to participate in, well, it works really well. So of course we have tensions, but we also have a lot of reunions to talk about those tensions and we use uh, non-violent communication to help uh, express ourselves and listen mostly uh, about the other needs. Eotopia, we call it, uh, it's an experimental place. Everything is about uh, experimenting because there is no, so I just want to precise there is no truth in what I'm saying. Uh, we've been experimenting uh, uh, life in a certain way as I have been experimenting uh, moneyless life in my journey, uh, which some people would say was not moneyless because many people use money around me that helped me like 
take a car to go somewhere or eat the food that was bought by, by someone. Um, but for me, this is always accessory because I really believe and experience that it's always very hard to just give up on the thing you're used to. So uh, like stopping using money, it's actually a, like a tool. For me, it was a, a great tool to just force myself to say, okay, I won't choose anymore what I want to eat or where I want to go and where I want to sleep. This is going to be chosen by the people I meet, but what's, uh, what I encounter. And at, at first it was kind of uh, difficult, but it was also so exciting because it does work in a very uh, strange way because most of the people still uh, meet you and they're like, okay, why not? Like we always like to help someone. Mm. Like we kind of forget about this. And that's why gift economy can work. If we remember that every time we have a chance to help someone, we're always very, very, very happy about it. And this is actually even a gift in itself, that uh, the, the opportunity to be able to give to someone. Some people are looking for this all the time. So actually when you go like this and you so open yourself, you put yourself in a situation of uh, vulnerability. So, and the people sense it. So if you're vulnerable, if like, you're in need of something, just people they have a reflex of they want to help you, to do something for you. And it really works um, in a crazy way. So of course, sometimes you wait six hours on the side of the road or you don't eat during one day or you just eat some pieces of bread. Uh, it's not like perfect, but uh, you get to your destination, you find food at one point, you always find a shelter somehow. We slept a lot outside as well, but it was more because we also didn't want always to be in the house of the people because we thought, okay, it's also about being in the wild and okay, what it is not to eat for one day and, and realize that actually it's not too bad. Mm. Uh, that just to experience things and realize that uh, living without money it's actually everyone can do it but uh, the question is do you really want to uh, be in a complete vulnerable state where um, you don't have this money, this security uh, that can prevent you from any time to experience certain things you don't want so for me this money less was really interesting to just also uh, try this and accept or understand that uh, money is just a tool and the whole world uh, we're all vulnerable in any way like something could happen today and you cannot do anything about it and uh, and if you don't want to and if you want to be happy it's important to learn to face those situations and uh, so trying to live w without money helps you like could be if you go in a meditation center and you sit during 10 hours it's also for me like another tool to accept a situation to train yourself to be able to accept uh, when something bad is happening or then you don't have something to to feed yourself or something and realize that it's actually okay so for me it was really important to actually find kind of a happiness uh, yeah to really find myself and realize that whatever happens there is always a way to feel happy and I would really invite anyone to just uh, try to experiment it because it's it teaches us a lot to like in the very old way days when the people didn't have this money thing they were just nomads yeah. and somehow they were living they were finding food they were finding shelters and and was working no so how strict are you here about this not buying things you know like for instance if someone uh, gets ill and needs medicine or 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 just like you feel like oh we do we we haven't had I really want to build this but I don't have this tool you know and I know there is some money on my account would, how strict are you? Yeah, we're not uh, strict anymore. Since we got the place and we opened ourselves to the idea of using money, we're not that strict. And also I'm learning myself. I'm still in the process of being less and less strict to accept more because it's also part of the deal to accept that, okay, if some people really need something and they have the money for it, it's perfect. So we use kind of a lot of money uh, compared to how we were living before. And uh, it's okay, but uh, we try not to lose the spirit of uh, if we need a tool, well, we don't buy it, we just wait, we do without, and often it actually comes uh, somehow. We just, we put like, we have this uh, list on the website, uh, things we need, and you know, we, we really, like the steam, steam machine, like for cooking vegetables broke, and like uh, two weeks later, someone came with a new one that was much better. Uh, you know, it's like my computer is getting really old and I cannot work anymore on it, and uh, this weekend they brought us like an old computer, of a brand that I, is the one I was saying, oh, I, would, I really would like this brand because this kind of computer I like. It's, uh, for me, it just works. Like, uh, we needed to print something and in the trash, trying, looking for food, we found a, a printer with print and it's still working. It's been one year and a half now. Just many little details. So, 
for me the only thing I know is it works so if we really have a big need and someone yes me needs something actually for Ada or anything well they can go to buy it and we have a car and we use a lot of money um, but the thing is uh, we know also that in many things uh, it's better not to buy because we can find a solution it's like like the documentary you show me you know like shortage creates creativity you know mm. and and this I really love mm. it because everything we we build is always like I don't like to buy new materials and we don't do it and Somehow it always, well, we, it works, like we don't really need it. So we could buy it, we have the possibility to, but uh, it's kind of not fun. And also I really like to experiment a bit more. And I hope we can go further in this road to experiment more and show more that, uh, yeah, there is a lot of resources and uh, it's a pity to enslave yourself in this uh, circle of I need money to do something. I think it's definitely okay to use money. But uh, it's a pity if you uh, refrain yourself to get money to be able to achieve certain things. Because without money, you can achieve most of your goals somehow. Yeah. You just have to be a bit more open and maybe accept that the thing won't be as beautiful or new as what you were expecting. But you can always find a way. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm always curious to hear like from people that try this community things. Like uh, we've seen a lot of times that it's also hard. Uh, wh what is for you the main challenge of living this way and uh, how do you work to overcome that? I think the hardest uh, to me and I guess for most of us living here uh, is definitely uh, tolerance. You know, accepting that everyone has, depending on the moment, depending on the month of the year, uh, different needs and also uh, sometimes we're like uh, mentally ready to be uh, like ecological warriors and go you know, uh, do like get all the ideas we have in the head like uh, concrete and some of the moments it's more like uh, it's a bit complicated some people like we, we cross by like uh, existential questions so there's some so for me the hardest is to find a way to always each of us uh, adjust to each other you know like to be like uh, okay you're not ready for this now but it's I don't have to get angry maybe one day you will or maybe it's not that important, or maybe I didn't express and uh, I didn't find the proper way to express my need, and for you it doesn't seem important. So we're using nonviolent communication in a way that we have this reunion three times a week where we express our feelings. We share our feelings, uh, always focusing on the points we liked and the points we disliked during like the last few days, and this helps us to like check the meteo we say in French like to mm. check the temperature you know to see okay oh this person is okay and like we can hear the problems if there is or not and and we don't react there is no debate about it it's just hearing we speak and we hear and we listen and uh, so this helps already to adjust to understand that someone is feeling a bit weird this day it's okay and um, but for me it's, it's hard sometimes we're like okay it's uh, it's fall we have to finish the I don't know the floor uh, before the winter comes it's gonna be too cold to work uh, so it's going to be hard for me to accept if someone says, okay, I really don't feel like working this week. Uh, but it's part of the process and sometimes it's hard for me, but every time I succeed in accepting this, I feel like I'm uh, growing. And I guess it's the same for everyone. We grow as a group and as individualities. Uh, wh when we succeed in accepting the situation as it is, this is the hardest thing because it's not always easy to just accept when you have like six different persons and they all have different minds and words inside their heads, but to... You succeed in just okay I accept this, this is a situation right now and it helps me always to focus I actually love this situation most of the time it's just now for a little detail there's something that bothers me and uh, but accepting for me it's like the main tool to be able to live in community as it is to live in family as it is to live with yourself because I think it's just the same thing yeah so it sounds like you know living moneyless and meditating and living this way you can always use all these all these things to to learn acceptance is that yeah for yeah. me it's uh, I have the idea sometimes that utopia maybe won't last forever and maybe in a couple of years we will leave or something will happen but I really see it as another great uh, tool to grow into a better person so a better dad and a, ber a better friend a better family member a better human being it's uh, yes yeah, I think those are you know it's like I'm a bit spiritual about this but you know this idea that life is just a just a ride and like so you you take the experiences to to grow somehow as the humanity is growing so for me yeah this is not much more than an experiment and I don't want to give it more value because it's only this 
I think the goal is not to live ecologically, it's not to have a great eco-village, it's not to be autonomous, it's to, to grow happily and to just like yeah, keep evolving as a species, to be more empathic and empathetic and more like uh, in peace, yeah, more in peace with what's around us and with ourselves, so yeah. Yeah, I, think, I, I guess that's the main goal. This is just like a, a frame or a, we say facade mm -hmm. in French. It's like the, it's like a theatre, you know, like it's not the... It's kind of superficial compared to what's really, uh, yeah, what's really important uh, inside it. This is just one of the ways you can get to that piece. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and we always, because sometimes we're very, we get really focused about the garden. We don't do enough. We have to become more autonomous. So we focus on the washing machine, uh, the electricity, the cars. And, and I, I, I really understand, uh, I really, I'm really convinced we should use less of those and like be more ecological. But uh, sometimes, as a group, we realize that the most important that is uh, that we can be all with each other, like uh, at peace with ourselves, with the others, so that everything we try to do is always done in a state of peace of mind. Which and that's where I think that the things that are really useful for the world. If not, I have, I have the feeling that sometimes we only create tensions with others, so it's not helping. I am wondering then, because you say like uh, the NVC helps me to grow as a person or the, the way of living like this and also within relationships here as a family member and with the community. But do you also take part in some projects or involving society also to grow as society from this place? Or how is your connection with society? Yeah, it's yeah. also really remote to be here. Yeah, true. No, we're very uh, connected. That's why we have a Facebook. That's why we have a website. For, for us, this place doesn't have any meaning if it's just to be us with each other. That's why we receive like about 10 people every month. So this is the connection. And beside this, we take part around in the local community. So we sing in the choir, for instance. There is another eco-village not so far, so we help as well. We have this big network of uh, unschooled families. Uh, which we take part as well because Ada doesn't go to school. So we have this uh, little thing and outside of it, uh, for instance, we have this uh, bike machine working with electricity. So we always try to work with university if they want to use Aotopia as a, as a social experiment somehow. Like they, uh, the student can help us somehow reflect to what we're doing, uh, to be critical about it or to help us find solutions. And, uh, and we want to focus more on this in the future. Like, uh, like also the school of Krona, our little village, like she, uh, the student, the, the little boys and girls, they came last year uh, for a day. So they were doing a little activities. So we mm. want to do more of that, like, uh, like to transform this place also in a pl really a place of experiment, but not only for uh, people looking for a change, but also for just other people around who, who feel like just discovering something different. It's just that this takes a lot of energy and we know that we have to stabilize the project before to go fully into uh, opening ourselves to uh, to society because uh, we live in a different way so there is uh, different energies and sometimes it, be, it can be very tiring for the people who try to do something different to be in direct confrontation with a society that sometimes goes in the other way so for me I'm really conscious about the importance of uh, again feeling at peace so uh, stabilize ourselves be sure that we are fine and ready to um, to connect with the other world without tension. And even if they judge you, that we don't feel judged because we're in peace with what we're doing. But it's definitely a, like kind of the main goal of the project, that this can be uh, useful for someone else, not just the residents and some visitors.